My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins, for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Now it happened that as he was praying alone, the disciples were with him. And he asked them, Who do the people say that I am? This scene has always struck me as interesting because there is like a tension here between our Lord's being alone in prayer and being accompanied by the disciples. Now it happened that as he was praying alone, the disciples were with him. It kind of almost begs the question, well, which one is it? Is he praying alone or are the disciples with him? Is he alone or not? And we know that to pray is to, in a certain sense, be alone with God no matter what's happening, no matter who is around. To address ourselves to God is to have God for ourselves and to give him our full attention. And so that's one way of understanding this, Jesus, that your prayer is alone with the Father. You're recollected, you're addressing yourself in a way exclusively to the Father, even if the disciples are with you, even if you're accompanied by others, you are alone in prayer. You're recollected, you're focused on God. Yeah, we also know that in a way we can be alone with others. (laughs) that he's alone with his disciples. No one else is there except him and his disciples. And he's praying. This is helpful for us, that being with others shouldn't be an obstacle to our recollection, to our prayer life. Whether it's a time of prayer where we're with others in a church or in a small setting, or being with others and praying with them isn't a distraction, it isn't an obstacle to our being recollected, to our our own prayer life. Or if it's just throughout the day, others don't have to be a distraction to our presence of God. They can actually be a means for us to remember God's presence, to see people as an opportunity to love God in them, to serve God by serving them. To be reminded that we're surrounded by souls, souls who God loves, souls who God is calling us to serve in some way. That others can be an occasion and a reminder for us to pray, to be in God's presence, as opposed to an obstacle or a distraction. Who do the people say that I am? This is the question our Lord asks his disciples. And they answer John the Baptist, but others say Elijah and others that one of the old prophets has risen. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, The Christ of God. But who do you say that I am? You, my followers, you who have left everything to follow me, you who have witnessed so many miracles and heard my sermons, who do you say that I am? Who do you take me to be? Who am I for you personally? Peter answers for the rest. The Christ of God, the anointed one, the Messiah of God, from God. Jesus, help us to hear you ask this question to us in this time of prayer. We too are praying alone together, but with you. And you ask us in our prayer, Who do you say that I am? Who do we say that you are, Jesus? Who are you for me? Do you play that role of Messiah, of Savior in my life when I realize that I'm in trouble? Is my first instinct to go to you for help, to go to you for salvation? When I realize that my own capacity to love or to believe is wavering, that I come up against the limits of my 
own goodwill, my strength of my character shows its cracks in one situation or another, in one relationship or another. Do I call out to you as Peter called out as he was sinking in the waves? Save, Lord, help me. I can't do this on my own. Are you my Messiah? Are you my Savior? Of God, do I worship you, Jesus? Do I give you the honor and adoration and respect and thanksgiving, devotion due to God, the Christ of God, the Son of God? Who do I say that you are, Jesus? And not just with my mind. We profess every Sunday the divinity of Christ in the Nicene Creed. Perhaps when we pray, pray the rosary, we confess the divinity of Christ also in the, in the Apostles' Creed. We profess with our mind and we make an act of consent of the will to that profession of faith that you are of God. But we can also ask, well, who do I say that you are with my life? Or to put it another way, who does my life say that Jesus is? If someone were to look at my life, how much I pray, how I treat other people, the decisions I make, I don't know, what I do online, how I shop, my attitude towards food and drinking and how I dress. And if someone to look at my life, who does my life say that Jesus is? Is my life Christian? Does it have a Christian tenor, a Christian tone? Or is it just like everyone else's except for a few pious practices and a couple of Catholic podcasts <laughs> thrown in to the mix? Who does my life say that you are, Jesus? Do you dominate my life in a natural way without anything strange or standing out? But the tenor of my life, how I treat others, how I work, how I talk, what's important to me, all of that, what does it say about you? Does it say that I am a Christian? Does it say that you are my God? Does it say that you have saved me from sin? Who does my morning say that you are Jesus? When I wake up, it's my first thought for you. Do I make a morning offering? Do I try to set my heart on ideals of service and love and prayer and hard work and overcoming myself? Who does my afternoon say that you are, Lord, when I get tired and want to take a break or scale back on the intensity of work because the hours are piling up when I want to be distracted and waste time scrolling or whatever our time waster is during those hours of work that can kind of drag on here or there. What does that say, Lord, how I respond to that about who you are for me? Who does my work in the afternoon say that you are? Who does my time at home, Lord, at night say that you are for me? How I treat my family when I come home, the cheerfulness, the interest I try to stir up in my heart for the others, my questions and my support, my patience, my silence at times when I realize that someone just doesn't like me to talk so much to them or is not up for it. Lord, who does my sensitivity and service towards my family at night say that you are for me? What I've done to the least of these, my brethren, I've done to you. Who does my charity towards others say that you are? Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, the Christ of God. Lord, help me to say the same. The Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, my Savior of God, my God, who I live for and live with and worship. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help. Put them into effect, my Immaculate Mother. St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.